bunny hopping. As well as a fun skill to impress your mates, it's also a useful skill to have out on the road. It could save your wheel, it could even save you from a crash. Now I've been riding bikes for quite a while and embarrassingly I haven't quite mastered the bunny hop. So today we're gonna see can we learn to bunny hop in a day? Some of us just have a natural skill and ability on the bike and bunny hopping is second nature. <laughs> Others like myself like to keep our wheels firmly on the ground, but we're gonna try and change that today. Bunny hopping is a great skill to have out on the road, whether it's avoiding some debris, avoiding a pothole that your friend forgot to point out, or even some evasive action like bunny hopping a curb. Bunny hopping is a great skill to have and it will improve your overall skills on the bike. We thought it would be best to get the experts involved in this and teach us the basics. And who better than GMBN's Blake Sampson? So Blake, I'd like to say I'm here to do something like a backflip or something equally as cool, but us roadies aren't as keen as crashing as you guys are. So I think we'll stick to the basics. Can you run us through the steps of how to do a bunny hop? Yes, for sure. It's one of those tricks that takes a little while to nail down, but as soon as you get it, or it just becomes second nature and you'll be hopping down that road and onto a trail. So just be careful. I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> Okay, there's two basic steps you need to learn to master the bunny hop. Combine the two together and you'll find yourself next to Danny McGaskill giving him a run for his money. All right, step one is all about moving your body weight over your back wheel. Now, as mountain bikers, we have a dropper post, so we can drop our saddle all the way down, making it a little bit easier to move our body weight all in this little area right here. Whereas on a road cycling bike, your saddle's pretty high up, so it's gonna be a little bit difficult moving your body weight over. But let me show you and give you a little bit of example. Now do that a few times, try and get a little bit comfortable. We're like lifting up the front wheel, just getting a little bit high, but don't pull too hard on it because you'll end up on your back and that's never good. You'll just be getting the wind kicked out of you. But if you feel like you're gonna go over the back a little bit too much, then use your back brake to bring that front wheel back down. Now let's see you try. Remember, it's all about doing repetitive stuff. Constantly do it. Practice, practice, practice. So I'm actually gonna practice on the grass because I don't actually trust myself on tarmac yet. And if I fall off on the grass, it's gonna be a lot less painful just in case. Why can't I lift my front wheel? Oh, oh yikes, I didn't do anything there. <laughs> okay, pretty, that was good. That was good. So I found a little plank of wood. Now I'm just gonna concentrate on just getting my front wheel over, not worrying about my back wheel because my back wheel will be able to roll over that without me crashing. So let's see if I can do that. I feel like Blake is making it look so easy and well, I'm finding it pretty difficult here. Nice, nice, like it. You're getting the hang of it, but a little bit more practice, you'll make it so second nature, you won't even believe it. Now, moving on to the second stage. This is where we want to get that rear wheel up. Now, you want to stand up on your bike. You want to basically push your weight forward onto the front, but not too much, but you want to push your weight forward. And when you do so, you want to curl your feet on your pedals and bring up the rear by using your hips. Now, if you have clipless pedals, don't rely on doing this because well, it just makes it harder when you combine all of it together. And plus it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a bad technique, so don't do so. Here's an example on how to do so.
Right now, let's see you do it, but don't, just don't be tempted to use your clipless pedals to get that rear wheel up. You're only cheating yourself. So I think I've just about mastered the front wheel, just about. I'm now gonna try and get my back wheel off the ground. Nailed it. So the back wheel is actually a little bit harder than I thought. I do feel like I am using my clipless pedals to lift my back wheel up, which might be cheating a little bit, but there's not much I can do about that. Sick, I like it. I can see how you're scooping up that rear wheel. You're getting it up. Now moving on, this is where it gets a little bit more harder. You want to combine the two together and get the bunny hop going. So. When you're coming into it, you're gonna be throwing your weight over the back, lifting up the front wheel, and as soon as it comes off the ground, this is where you wanna throw your weight up and over into the front and curling your feet on those pedals to bring that rear wheel up. This is where it gets hard. So there you go, that's how you do a basic bunny hop. Now it's all about practice, practice, practice when it comes to this technique because it's quite hard to start off with. The technique is quite a lot going on when you're starting off with a bunny hop, but as soon as you nail it, it'll be like second nature. And you'll be hopping down the road, hopping over every single road cyclist out there. Hal, you probably give Hank a run for his money. So now I'm gonna try with a plank of wood with my front wheel and my back wheel. See how it goes. Please don't do that again. Please don't do that again. So one thing that I'm finding really hard that I didn't think I would find that hard is the timing. So lifting my front wheel and then my back wheel. In my head, I'm trying to lift both at the same time, which if you're doing a bunny hop properly that you can't really do, you have to lift, lift the front wheel and lift, then lift the back wheel over. So I'm finding that one quite hard to find the right timing because I am finding I'm clipping my back wheel. Hey Blake, check this out. Whoa, you're getting there. That's pretty good. It's pretty good, but it's a little bit more practice and that technique and you'll be, you'll be nailing it. Now, the, the best thing about this is finding something in, your, in front of you that you can use as an obstacle to gauge yourself. So if there's a pothole or there's a stick, put it in front of you and use it as an obstacle to bunny hop over. And if you can clear that, make it a little bit bigger. And you can clear that. That's, how, that's where the fun comes into it, when you start challenging yourself. Keep practicing. You're getting there. Thanks, Blake, for the tips. They really are helping. I think I'm starting to get there. I'm definitely a lot better than when I first started. Um, I think I'm making it a little bit harder for myself by putting a plank of wood out because I do feel like maybe I'll get my front wheel over it and then my back wheel will just clip it right at the end or vice versa. So I'm definitely gonna need some more practice before I try this out on the open roads. Oh my God. No, that was scary. That was very scary. Go back to basics. Well, at the start of this video, I really didn't think I would be bunny hopping over anything. I mean, I probably did get a little bit carried away at the start adding the plank, but I really do feel like this will help me out on the road. Just doing this in the garden for an hour or so has really helped. And I feel like I could use it out on the open road if I needed to bunny hop a pothole or a rock or even jump onto a curb. Let us know if a bunny hop has saved you out on the road and I'm going to send my clips to Hank because he's going to be so impressed. <laughs>